deploy a Dino application to Cloudflare workers using Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.375.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has the Dino CLI installed on it. There's also a sample repository. The link to that repository is down in the description. So let's look at the starting point of what that sample repository is. There is a page in the Dino documentation called Deploy Dino to Cloudflare Workers. So everything that we're doing is being built off of this document. Now you'll notice that it talks about setting up Dino Flare. Now, a few moments ago, I said that we have a Linux-based agent that has the Dino CLI installed on it. Typically, when you interact with Cloudflare, you might be using the Wrangler CLI. But in this case, there is a purpose-built CLI called Dino Flare that we're going to be using. So not only do I have the Dino CLI installed on that agent, but I also have the Dino Flare CLI installed on that agent. Now, in our repository, we have a file called main.ts that looks exactly like this the export default, and we're doing a fetch and just responding with hello world. Again, we're not doing anything fancy here. We're just making sure that we can take our application and deploy it to Cloudflare workers and also build in a few extra things along the way. So if we were going to test this locally, we could run Dino Flare serve main TS and see how it works, but we're not going to do that because I've already tested that out. This process is about taking what's in our repository, using the Dino CLI and the Dino Flare CLI, to get our application out to Cloudflare. Now, the one thing that we'll be doing a bit differently is configuring .dinoflare. I don't want to have a configuration file in my sample repository that has the values for my account ID or my API token. So we're gonna be working with the dinoflare CLI to not require using the dinoflare config file. So let's go ahead and take a look at our sample repository. We have a main TS which looks exactly like what we saw over in the Dino documentation. We also have a main test TS that we're going to use as a validation test after we do the deploy of the application. So what we'll be doing is we'll be fetching the URL, which it's going to be going to this base URL. We're going to pull in the text. We're going to validate that the status code is a 200, and also we're going to validate the text coming back. Also in this repository, we have a Jenkins file. Now let's break down this Jenkins file real quick. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to verify that the Dino CLI and the Dino Flare CLI are set up correctly on the agent. Next up, we're going to run a Dino Lint. The reason why we're doing this is to make sure that any of the files that are being deployed out to Cloudflare workers follow the standard from the Lint. Next up, we're going to do a compile. Now, we're not going to be using the compiled version, but we're making sure that it does compile. Again, much like Lint, this is just another check. And then finally, we're going to be pushing our main TS file up to Cloudflare by using Dino Flare. So these first two steps, using the Dino CLI, this next one, we're using Dino Flare. And we're going to say Dino Flare push main TS. Now, if we go back to the documentation and we look below the configuration file, this is where this starts. Dino Flare push main. But notice what I have here. I have Dino Flare push main TS, and then I'm specifying the account ID and the API token. Well, in my scenario, what I've done is I've set these up as secret text credentials, and I'm pulling those in from the credential store. Now, prior to recording, I went ahead and set up both my account ID and my API token. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to run Dino test, which will run that integration test for main test TS. So now that we've gone through all of our configurations within the repository, let's go ahead and run our Dino CFW job, which is pointing at the Jenkins file in the repository. So we'll go ahead and click on build now. And let's see what happens as this runs. And we can see that the job failed. Let's scroll up and take a look at the output. We can see that our Dino version is 1.31.1. We can see our Dino Flare version is 0.5.11. So those versions are fine for what we need. We'll scroll down and look at Dino Lint. And what we can see from Dino Lint is that request is never used. So there's a hint if this is intentional, which in my case it is, prefix it with an underscore like underscore request. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go back over to our repository. Let's go into main TS and let's go ahead and edit this file and change the request to underscore request. And since we're living on the edge, we're going to commit directly to the main branch. Let's go back over and let's run our job one more time. So let's go ahead and scroll up and take a look at the output here. We made it past our initial Dino and Dino Flare versions. We see that our Dino Lint was fine. We also see that our compile was fine. So again, we don't care about what the compile is, we just care that it did compile. Now let's go down to our Dino push 
MainTS. Here's our account ID and also our API token. So it bundles it up, it puts the script, and then finally we run our test. So in running the test, it fails. So let's take a look at this. And what we'll notice is that when we run Dino test, because we're reaching outside to the internet, we need to allow net access to be able to access this domain. So let's go ahead and copy this dash dash allowed dash net. Let's go back over to our Jenkins file and let's make a change to that. So we'll say Jenkins file, edit, and then down here for test, let's put in allow dash net. We'll go ahead and click on commit changes. And then one more time, let's go back and run the job. And what we can see here is the test failed again, but it failed for a different reason, not for the allow net. What we can see here is we're getting a 404 instead of a 200. So what does this really mean? Well, there's a couple of reasons why this could happen, but let's go over into our Cloudflare dashboard and take a look at our main worker. So this is the main worker that we would go ahead and expect our application to be running at. Let's head over to triggers and take a look at the route. And what we can see here is that this route for main.planetpope.workers.dev is actually disabled. So we need to enable this domain in order for the test to react. Well, fortunately, since we are using Dino Flare Push, if we take a look at the documentation, what we'll see here is there is an option to enable or disable the workers.dev route. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and include a workers-dev attribute to our Jenkins file. So let's go back over to our Jenkins file. Let's edit this file one more time. Let's take a look at our push and we'll add in workers-dev. And let's go ahead and click on commit changes. And finally, let's go back over and run the job one more time. We'll go to Dino CFW, click on build now. Now in this case, we still had an issue with the 404 and the 200, but if we go back over and take a look at the Cloudflare dashboard, we can see now that this domain is enabled. So maybe we're just in a race condition. Maybe we should have put a sleep in between the push and the actual running of the Dino test. That would make sense. But in this case, we didn't do that. So let's go ahead and go back to Dino CFW. Let's run this job one more time and let's see if it passes this time. And we can see finally now that after all that cleanup, so the couple of things that we did, we fixed our main TS to add in an underscore so Dino lint would pass. We ended up needing to add in the workers-dev in order for the route to enable. And then also we needed to add an allow net to our Dino test so that when our test runs, it could actually access the internet. So after all of that, we're now able to take our Dino application, deploy it to Cloudflare workers, all using Jenkins. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.